Hello, I'm Michael Gross, host of the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network. The invention of the steam locomotive in 1830 changed the way goods and people were transported and propelled America into the 20th century full force. This locomotive is a fireless locomotive recently donated from the Smithsonian to the B&O Railroad Museum. This locomotive could be considered as the pioneer of uh, going green. Early steam locomotives like the Tom Thumb were nicknamed grasshoppers because their driving gear and rods bobbed up and down resembling the legs of a grasshopper. Grasshopper locomotives weighed about six and a half tons with a short wheelbase that made them ideal for sharp curves. The next generation of steam locomotives were known as crabs. They were similar to the grasshoppers but with horizontally mounted cylinders that reminded people of Maryland's famous crabs. Freight locomotives were designed so that all the locomotive's weight were placed on the wheels. These freight locomotives were called mud diggers with gears similar to the crabs but much larger in size. By 1839, the first 440 American locomotives were delivered to the B&O and these locomotives became the railroad's standard passenger power. By 1890, the B&O had grown into an 1800 mile system that reached from Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington to Chicago and St. Louis. In that year, the B&O was operating 820 steam locomotives, and new routes were being added. As the 20th century approached, development of the steam locomotive was advancing at a rapid pace. As the size of the engines increased, so did the need for steam capacity. This translated into larger fireboxes. Several consolidation-type locomotives were built with Wooten fireboxes, which were much wider than conventional fireboxes and specifically designed to burn waste anthracite coal. It became obvious that wider fireboxes were not an ideal method for increasing great area, so the next step was to make fireboxes longer. This required the addition of a two-wheel trailing truck behind the drive wheels to support the longer firebox, creating yet another wheel arrangement. The first B&O locomotives to be equipped with a trailing truck was in 1900. Although these locomotives performed well, the introduction of all steel passenger cars prompted the design of an even larger passenger engine, the 462 Pacific type. In 1916, the next group of steam locomotives were built with two-wheel lead trucks for better tracking producing the 2880. When was the first issue of the B&O magazine published? All aboard! The B&O Halloween Bash, Saturday, October the 30th, from noon to 2 p.m. Come celebrate Halloween with a costume party beneath the pavilion. Join us for a spectacular afternoon of fun that includes Halloween games, crafts, music, and refreshments. Party cost is $5 per child for ages 2 to 12 with paid admission. All aboard for a monster of a good time. Recommended for ages 4 to 12. Holiday Festival of Trains, November the 26th, 2010 through January the 2nd, 2011. Celebrate the holiday season at Baltimore's largest holiday display of toy and model train layouts. Weekend train rides and photo opportunities with Santa through December the 19th. Weekend train rides with Frosty the Snowman through January the 2nd. Join us for a trainload of fun that has become an annual holiday family tradition. Toddler Time Halloween Celebration and Costume Parade. Wednesday, October the 27th at 10.30 a.m. Join us for this year's Last Toddler Time featuring a classic railroad story and Halloween celebration. Children parade in costume around the museum campus to collect special treats. Children may take a train ride through Choo Choo Blueville, all included with paid admission. Recommended for ages two to five. The first B&O magazine was published in October of 1912. In 1917, the U.S. government took control of the railroads 
under the auspices of the U.S. Railroad Administration that developed 12 standardized designs of steam locomotives. The B&O received and built 100 Mikados, 30 Pacifics, and 25 Malays. In 1920, control was returned to the railroad, and the B&O continued to invest in new and larger locomotives over the next seven years, including its centennial celebration of producing its president's line. 20 locomotives named for an American president and used for its Royal Blue Line from New York to Washington. In 1944, the B&O built its last modern steam locomotives, the EM-1s. These locomotives weighed over 300 tons, had huge boilers, and a wheel arrangement of 2884. They serviced both freight and passenger runs. In 1958, the era of the B&O steam power came to an end when the railroad retired its steam locomotives and switched to using diesel power. The Fireless locomotive was built by the Heisler Locomotive Works in Erie, Pennsylvania for the Potomac Electric Power Company, PEPCO, in 1938. Unlike other steam engines, this unique 35-ton locomotive did not need a fire to produce steam. Instead, it was filled with steam and superheated water from the power plant's boilers under high pressure at temperatures around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The locomotive was capable of operating by itself for approximately five hours on one charge of steam and superheated water. In the U.S., fireless locomotives ran exclusively on the networks of tracks located within the boundaries of some of the largest coal-fired power stations operated by utilities. The locomotive needed to remain close to the power plant in order to be recharged. An early example of green technology, the fireless steam locomotive emitted only steam vapor, unlike other locomotives which release smoke exhaust. From 1938 until 1974, the Pepco locomotive operated at the Buzzard Point Power Station in Washington, D.C., hauling coal. From 1974 to 1978, it was used at the Potomac River Power Station in Alexandria, Virginia. In 1979, Pepco restored and donated the locomotive to the National Museum of American History's Work and Industry Collection, where it had been in storage until August 18, 2009, when it was donated to the B&O Railroad Museum and will be on exhibit to the public from this point forward. Each October, the B&O Railroad Museum devotes a weekend to operating some of their historic steam locomotives. Mark your calendars to take part in this annual event. This is Michael Gross. Thanks for watching the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network. RailFest Steam Days Weekend, October 16th and 17th. Take a steam train ride behind the St. Elizabeth and watch a steam demonstration by the oldest operating steam engine in America, the William Mason. Join us for this weekend devoted to steam power as we let off a lot of steam.